Is it time for you to film with anamorphic lenses? Hey, my name is Matt Johnson with whoismatt.com and today I'm gonna to be answering that question and reviewing an anamorphic lens because I've been filming with this Sure Saturn 35 millimeter anamorphic for a while now and I think it's pretty cool. Before we get started though, for the sake of ethics, I want you to know that Sure did send me this lens, but they sent it to me in exchange for me posting an Instagram reel about it, which I happily did, and you can check that out on my Instagram page, which I will link to down below. Anyways, after I posted that reel, Sure didn't ask me to do anything else. So I'm making this video purely because I want to, and I think anamorphic lenses are cool, and I'm not getting paid for this video by Sure or anyone else for that matter, and they don't even know that I'm making this video. Anyways, let's start off by talking about what is an anamorphic lens. In essence, an anamorphic lens is a lens that is purpose-built to distort the image that your camera is recording. Unlike a normal camera lens like the Sony 24mm that I'm using to record this video right now, with that lens you can put it on a camera and get a nice wide-angle field of view that will look great straight out of camera. Alternatively though, with an anamorphic lens, your camera is actually going to record a distorted version of the image where everything is squeezed together horizontally. The amount of how much squeezing is going to happen and how distorted the image is going to be is going to depend on how the lens is manufactured. With all anamorphic lenses having a number associated with them, such as 1.6x or 1.8x or 2x, etc., and all of these numbers are really telling you the ratio of how squeezed the image is going to be horizontally versus vertically. So for example, a 1.8x anamorphic lens will give you 1.8 times more horizontal information than a traditional lens. Side note, by the way, a lot of older anamorphic lenses are actually made to be used with cameras that can record in the four by three aspect ratio, which is going to record an image that looks like it's made for an old TV that isn't widescreen. But there are now newer lenses like this Sure lens that are made for full frame cameras that do not give you the option of recording in four by three. Well, cool, Matt, I got this anamorphic lens and recorded this distorted footage that has a lot more horizontal data, as you say, than a normal lens. What do I do with it now? <laughs> well, here's where things get cool, because you now need to undistort the image through a process called de-squeezing, which you can do in any of the major video editing software programs today, either manually by using a horizontal stretching effect or by using presets that are included in most video editing softwares. This de-squeezing is a really fun process, and to me, it gives a similar feeling of satisfaction that I get when I'm color grading a log image. Just like how it's satisfying to see the colors that you film go from super flat and desaturated to super contrasty and colorful, you get the satisfaction of seeing all of your footage look squeezed and distorted, then suddenly all stretched out and correct. It's really cool and I could de-squeeze things all day. Something like I work at like a Jamba Juice, but I'm not squeezing the oranges, I'm unsqueezing, I don't know. Anyways, uh, this de-squeezed image is going to really give you a look that is iconic in Hollywood. Over the years, so many movies have been filmed in anamorphic, and so many viewers are used to seeing their films presented in this way. So filming in anamorphic is just another way to immerse your viewers in the video that you are creating. Now, one thing that I'm sure you may have noticed about the squeezing in the examples that I'm showing you is that the squeezing comes at a cost. Namely, you are going to see black bars appear at the top and bottom of your video footage if you're working on a normal 16 by 9 video timeline. So this is something that may blow your mind, but the reason that a lot of Hollywood films are presented in a wider aspect ratio than typical 16 by nine video, meaning that whenever you watch a Hollywood film on your TV and it has the bars on top and bottom, the reason you are seeing those bars is because many Hollywood films have been shot with anamorphic lenses, which then need to be de-squeezed and result in those black bars at the top and bottom. Yes, what I'm saying is that unlike many of us on YouTube that have to add those black bars in post to make our videos look more cinematic and copy Hollywood, if you're filming with an anamorphic lens, you don't need to do that. The black bars come with the lens. It's pretty cool. And remember earlier that I said that different anamorphic lenses have different amounts of distortion that they apply to the image that's being recorded. Those 1.6x, 1.8x, and 2x numbers, etc. Well, the higher that number is, the more distortion is applied to the footage that you're recording. And the more distorted the image, the larger the black bars are gonna be on the top and bottom of the image whenever you de-squeeze it. So the main thing that you need to keep in mind is that if you decide to film it anamorphic and you decide to use more than one lens, 
I would definitely make sure that all of your lenses match up in terms of how much they are squeezing your image, because otherwise either your bars are going to be different sizes on the top and bottom, which can be really jarring, or you're going to need to crop off the edges of some of your video clips so everything matches up. Anyways, this distortion is one thing that makes anamorphic lenses unique, but there is one other big reason to film in anamorphic, and it's a reason that I'm betting that you've noticed, especially considering how many different companies are selling anamorphic lenses these days and advertising the features of them. This big other feature of filming in anamorphic is the addition of anamorphic lens flares. Yes, if you've watched any J.J. Abrams films like Star Trek or had the opportunity to use an anamorphic lens before, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. These are those massive blue or orange flares that you get reflecting in your shot that look super dramatic. And here's where we got to talk about personal preference, because these anamorphic flares have been a point of contention for many filmmakers. Some filmmakers love the colorful flares look and cannot get enough of them and are throwing up lights in their videos to make even more flares, while other filmmakers want a cleaner, a simpler aesthetic and find anamorphic lens flares to be distracting. Whether you like them or not is really going to be up to your personal preference, but I do want to point out something really interesting and exciting about this Suray lens in particular that I really like. See. Typically, whenever you're purchasing an anamorphic lens, the manufacturer is going to put a lens coating on the glass of the lens that's going to dictate the color of the flares that you get from it. For example, most anamorphic lenses are going to have a blue coating on them that makes the flares blue. This brings us to this new 35 millimeter from Suray though, and what I love about this lens is that instead of limiting you to a blue flare, they also give you the option of selecting a natural flare color, which means that whatever color the light source is in your video that your lens is picking up, the lens is going to make the flares that color. Yes, there's no more requirement for you to have blue flares in your films. Instead, you can use this anamorphic lens like any other lens that you normally use and that the lighting that you're using dictate the color of the flares. I personally love this because I'm the kind of filmmaker that always found anamorphic flares to be a bit distracting, especially whenever they were super blue because half the time I felt like I wasn't watching the video, I was watching the lens flares. They were distracting because they were such bright colors that didn't match the rest of the scene. But with this 35 millimeter, things are different because now the flares are going to match with whatever you're filming, and I think it's pretty cool. So that's what an anamorphic lens is and what makes them special, but we still have to answer the question. Is it time to start filming your videos in anamorphic? And here's where things get really interesting, because in the past, for most situations, I would have said no. And there are two big reasons why. The first reason is the complexity of the setup. In the past, anamorphic lenses have been pretty rare and difficult to find because there aren't many companies making them anymore. And in addition, using some anamorphic lenses required you to essentially mount an anamorphic lens to a more traditional camera lens and essentially use a dual lens setup to film an anamorphic. This got really complicated really quickly because you would attach the anamorphic lens to a traditional camera lens, set the traditional camera lens focus to infinity, and then use the anamorphic lens for focusing. All the while, hoping that the focus was working right, dealing with a softer image at times, or the focus plane not being aligned perfectly, and worse, a decent amount of these anamorphic lens adapters only worked with much tighter lenses, limiting you to filming in anamorphic at tighter focal lengths only. In short, it was a big pain, and I never really found it worth it. But that all changed a few years ago when we started to see companies like Suray offering new anamorphic lenses that removed the vast majorities of these complexities and compromises that older anamorphic lenses had. And I gotta say, this new 35 millimeter is the cream of the crop. Not only is this lens incredibly compact and lightweight, it's also sharp. It attaches to your camera just like any other normal full frame camera lens. It has a normal focus ring just like a traditional lens. You get clickless aperture control. And overall, I've only really found two downsides to using this lens. The first downside isn't a huge deal, and I'm sure you're not surprised to hear it, but this lens does not have autofocus. It has gearing if you want to attach a follow focus ring, and then maybe you could use something like the LiDAR on the DJI Ronin to give it autofocus, but I don't think I've ever seen a native autofocus anamorphic lens, but I bet we might in a few years. Anyways, the other con of this specific Suray lens is a little bigger and something that you're definitely going to want to be aware of, and that is that this lens is not very good when it comes to the minimum focusing distance. Unfortunately, this 35mm has a minimum focusing distance of about 3 feet, which is 
pretty far away, especially for a 35 millimeter, which is a lens you usually want to get up pretty close to people when filming. So that means that out of the box, you're not going to be able to use this lens for close ups. It's a bummer, but there is a workout around. And I want to give a huge shout out to Brandon Lee, who first showed me this lens when we hung out in New York City because he made a video about the lens that I will link to down in the description. And in that video, he showed off a really cool workaround for this minimum focus distance issue. Brandon's recommendation was to invest in a set of diopters, which I purchased as well, and I will link to down below. And if you put one of these diopters on the end of your lens, it essentially is gonna give this 35 millimeter near sightedness. The lens will have a much closer minimum focusing distance, but will lose the ability to focus to infinity. So if you're filming, say, a talking head, for example, and you really want to film your interview in anamorphic, but you're stressing about not being able to get the subject close enough to fill up the frame, throw one of these diopters on your lens and you're gonna be able to focus much closer and get a much shallower looking depth of field, which is great. Oh, and by the way, this lens has a T 2.9 aperture, which is pretty good, but it's definitely not gonna be as bocalicious as say a F 1.4 lens, for example. So keep that in mind. Anyways, as you can see, this 35 millimeter really solves a lot of the complexities and issues that come from filming with a 35 millimeter lens. And there's really only one other thing that we need to talk about that has kept me from recommending anamorphic lenses in the past. That one thing is the price. Look, I think we can all agree that most lenses these days are expensive. I feel like lenses were getting cheaper toward the end of the popularity of DSLRs, but then all of the camera manufacturers discovered they could make mirrorless cameras and charge dramatically more for their lenses, and suddenly we're seeing lenses that cost $2,000 plus all the time. I gotta say though, I wish that some of the older anamorphic and higher end anamorphic lenses out there only cost $2,000 because you're looking at spending $9,000 plus for some of them. And there are even more specialty anamorphic lenses like those from Cook. And with those, you're looking at spending $30,000 or more. Just rent them. That's what they want you to do. They want you to rent them. Okay, don't don't go buy a Cook lens. I mean, you can if you want to. Let me borrow it and I'll review it. That'd be fun. Anyways, my point is that anamorphic is a niche type of lens that has always been expensive unless you find a fantastic deal on eBay. Thankfully, though, things are finally changing because I'm happy to tell you that this Sue Ray 35 millimeter lens doesn't cost tens of thousands of dollars or even a few thousand dollars. No, they've priced it at 1300 bucks, which I feel is pretty reasonable. And at that price point with this lens, Suray have really made me rethink my position on anamorphic lenses. They've simplified a lot of the complexity that comes from filming an anamorphic. They've made the pricing so much more approachable for many filmmakers. They've made the flares less glaring. And now all we have left to do is answer the question, is it time to film an anamorphic? If you like the thought of getting black bars on your footage naturally and not having to add them in post while also getting some really killer lens flares, then I would say, yes, it's time to film an anamorphic. Guess what though? You're also going to need to edit an anamorphic too. And to help you out with your editing, regardless of whether you're editing anamorphic or traditional footage, I've put together a free guide called edit videos like a pro. And this guide is going to walk you through how to edit better and faster than ever before. It's a completely free gift. You can download it the link down in the video description. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Matt Johnson with an anamorphic beard, whatever that means. Have a great day.